Hi, I'm Dave. This is the Cider Baby Pod, and today I am speaking to Todd from Heroes and Monsters. Hello. How are you? I'm very well. You're looking well, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Feeling you, good. Good, good. You, you've got quite a collection of guitars behind you. Yeah, it's kind of embarrassing. I, uh, are you a collector? Eddie, I am a little bit of a collector. That's an Eddie Van Halen. That's a Johnny Ramone. There's a lot of signature things going on here. There's a Paul Stanley right. and Gene Simmons, Ace Fraley. It's a lot of like that kind of stuff, but uh, in here anyway. I mean, luckily I have one of those wives that puts up with there being more guitars around the house. Okay, okay. You're you're a luckier man than me then. <laughs> well, you're I, lucky in other ways, uh, other that, than having guitars lying around your house. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I know yeah, she'll yeah. be watching this in a minute. Uh, <laughs> moving swiftly on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Heroes and Monsters. This is not your first radio, is it? No, yeah. no. It's yeah. It's uh, it's my hundredth ra- rodeo. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, people may recognise you from a certain um, conspiratorial role, shall we say? Yes, yes, yeah. I've been playing with Slash for well, this year marks thirteen years. Really? Wow, that's that shocking to say. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I have seen you play with Slash a few times now. And, oh, cool. Uh, I've enjoyed every show. Um, Where at? Uh, download and uh, oh, okay. and uh, the NEC in Birmingham as well. Great, great, and, yeah, uh, yeah. So I, I know what you can do, and you don't actually just play bass as well. You ju- you actually do sing a couple of tracks, don't you? Uh, Motorhead one, I do believe. Yeah, yeah. We generally uh, they generally throw a few my way. I think it initially started as singing a couple songs from the 2010 solo album. Lemmy sang a song. Yeah. Iggy Pop sang a song. And then eventually it turned into, hey, do you know the words to Out to Get Me? Or do you know the words to My Michelle or Welcome to the Jungle? And the answer was always, yeah, I know all that stuff. I I just know Appetite for Destruction, like, you know, probably better than my children's birthdays, which is, a, <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not ashamed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so you've had a few... Um bands in the past i mean you've got your own solo stuff doing at the moment yeah as well as yeah i'm always always got stuff going on yeah so you're basically a lifelong musician aren't you that's it yes yes it's uh i i think of it as a more of a blue collar type thing you know it's you know i, I wake up every day and sort of put the hard hat on and go to work in a lot of ways is how i think of it anyway um but you know i i, it, I feel very fortunate that that's what i do you know i mean at any point you can be sort of uh it, it, as the kiss song says it's it's never too late to work nine to five and that's you know and that's true <laughs> at any point they could be like you can fall out of favor or you just you know a couple bad decisions and next thing you know you're back to uh selling cars or whatever else is out there you know yeah maybe which i would be terrible at uh yeah me too um so you have a new album and a new project as i suppose heroes and monsters is coming out in a yeah. frontiers label uh, what a week or two on january 20th yeah, yeah so very so, soon yeah yeah next week yeah so uh it's you basically with a bass guitar singing uh with steph burns and will hunt yeah that's correct yes yeah so, how did this all come about well i've known will a long time um <clears throat> he was sort of a you know i'm sort of a great admirer of his playing and his uh his skills he's also one of those guys that uh, has really surprised me as a uh you know, because you, you don't really know. All you know is I know he's a drummer. I he's a fantastic drummer, but turns out he's a he's a very creative, great writer, and a really great mixer and and producer type mind as well. So, um, but I didn't know that on the initial phone call. It was sort of like, hey man, me and uh, my friend are doing this thing, and would you be interested? And I'm like, well, yeah. It was I, of course. Keep in mind, this is um in the midst of. The pandemic so i'm yeah. kind of sitting around not doing much of anything and then yeah send it on over that turned into a song called locked and loaded and then another one and another one and the next thing you know you're sitting on an album's worth of material and and uh yeah it's it's weird to be talking about it now as it's like starting to kind of get ready to come out yeah yeah so uh you mentioned locked and loaded uh that was what the first single I believe. Yeah, we released it as a as a lyric video and as a single. Yeah. Yeah. They're followed by Raw Power and Let's Ride It. Let's Ride It. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So they're like the three commercial songs of the album. I I, I would say. Yeah, I think the intention. I mean, like you know, when you're when you're when you're making a record, you really 
don't really I, at least for me anyway I, there wasn't a great deal game, game plan as to like it needs to be this kind of record or mm. you know this type of sound it was just sort of like just just see what kind of happens and then go from there and um i think it's pretty diverse but at the same time it's sort of you know very much you know the the sound of a, of a rock and roll band and i think that we kind of uh uh managed to make a, a bit of a, a journey along the way with some ups and downs and some quiet bits uh the the song all that Rem all that remains is probably the quietest and it closes the album mm, so yeah. yeah um yeah i do like that it's quite epic uh, i suppose the two songs that i really do like uh angels never sleep and uh break me oh cool yeah yeah very different songs from one another yeah. but yeah i appreciate that yeah break me was sort of one of those ones where we kind of leaned into the fun part of acdc riffs and and sort of screaming vocals kind of yeah <laughs> you know and it just sort of like you know i feel like in the at this point in in time it, there doesn't need to be a lot of because when you grew up in the when you came through the 90s there became a sort of is this too 80s sounding is this too like that kind of conversation would happen a lot and it was very yeah. sort of like it was very silly because we always kind of felt like I don't know that that's really um I don't know if that's really a concern anymore like it's kind of like it's the 21st century let's just make music let's who cares if it this has a slight lean that way and this has a slight lean this way it was just kind of like just put together a collection of songs and hope people enjoy it angels never sleep is a very different kind of song but um but it has you know a lean into the sort of epicness of being able to kind of move from soft to to loud and all points in between and um big old chorus on it and away we go you know yeah yeah uh i suppose i mean look i've got a list here on my screen here and um i knew you were the devil that's quite quite a riff on it as well i mean it's a big one yeah it is a big riff but going yeah. through like the list of songs then there's no two that are really the same are they they're, they're quite they're all quite different yeah i think so i mean it's weird for me because when you're in the middle of it you get so subjective you can't make sense you not know, no, that you can't make the sense of it but it's more you don't really think about like you know you have your preferences of what you kind of are into like when you with the kind of music you like to play the kind of music you like to be a part of um, but I think it's important when making a record to not, not do, I don't know, maybe just 10, 12 versions of the same song. Mm. Um, although, you know, I mean, like, you know, in thrash metal or punk rock, it's sort of like very much a normal thing for it to be yeah. sort of, it's sort of repetitive in, in its own way. And that's sort of the effect of it. And I, I appreciate that. But I think in doing this, it's sort of more like, you know, thinking in terms of Led Zeppelin or a band like that, where, you know, in the course of Zeppelin three, where there's, you know, uh, soft acoustic songs and then you know immigrant song you know or whatever yeah i think that that's sort of the nature of most uh you know the things that we try to do yeah um another track that black uh that stands out for me blame it's quite dark and it's also it is it, it is almost new metal in, in its sound as well isn't it, it there is so? a bit of that there is a bit of that because uh you know there's there's some weird like um time signature stuff in there that's totally not me that 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 that's kind of one of those things where I'm like, okay, you know, I'm trying to make sense of how we're gonna how we're gonna do this. I mean, actually, that's the one I'm wrestling with the most now, trying to figure out how to play it live. But um, yeah, it's it's very it's very different for me. But it was really fun to to do something so um, out of my wheelhouse. And I'm one of those guys that kind of like enjoys that, enjoys the kind of like, let's do something a little different here. Mm. Okay. Um. So, are you planning to tour this? Yeah, we're doing. Well, we're doing um, 10 dates in Italy right away. And and we are sort of at the mercy of everyone's schedules. You know, I think that, you know, Will has a big Evanescence tour coming up. And that sort of puts us in the predicament of like, well, here's a window of time. Let's go to Italy, you know, which was started off as one show and became 10, you know. And then now it's sort of waiting to see what the next window of possibility could be. It's, it's an interesting time because stuff like frontiers records are very good at collecting you know guys from different things and putting together yeah. a bit of a super group and putting out a record and then um but they never have any intention of actually touring or playing live at all so right um but in doing that it sort of creates a different uh this was not one of those at all we we sort of found each other and put the record out it wasn't sort of um 
let's you know never tour it i think we had every intention of trying to do whatever we could but knowing that everybody is as busy as they are keep in mind that during the pandemic it's really there was a lot of like we're never going to be touring again the live mm -hmm. music scene is dead yeah there was a lot of that talk which none of it i really fell for but there was a big you know the, to me it was like well then we write and we record it's what we do we play music it's I, I, what am I going to do with all this crap? <laughs> it's, kind of, I, it's, like, it's like, so we just write songs and we release music, I guess. I mean, if we can't play live, which seemed ridiculous to me. Um, and now here we are back at it. And it's, you know, within, I remember at the top of 22, people were still saying that. And it was like, boom, yeah. Guns N' Roses tour, boom, you know, this and that. Everybody was back on the road. And I was like, there you go. Yeah. And uh, all points in between. Okay. Okay. Uh, We'll step away from Heroes and Monsters now for just a little bit. Um, sure. You've you've played with a huge amount of people over the years. I mean, where, what stage are you really happy playing? Are you happy playing the download mega festivals, or are you happy playing the little theaters or the big arenas? I mean, what what holds the biggest draw for you? That is really you know it's such an interesting thing. I've never really you know thought about that in a weird way because there's something about a divey little bar that that experience you can't get anywhere else but there you know what i mean and, and they yeah. exist they exist in des moines iowa they exist in birmingham they exist in finland you know what i mean they they're all over the planet and that intimate thing is part of it in a lot of ways is my favorite like, is that sort of like we're in the room together it's sweaty it's gross but people are there because they want to be you know what i mean like they're there to see you to see what you're doing and i i think that coming up in that i sort of i find myself very much at home in that environment um of course there's the creature comforts that come from playing arenas and that kind of stuff yeah. that change the game i mean obviously playing to a gigantic audience that is hugely supportive of your music um is incredibly rewarding um and i it's hard to like you know we all dream of you know standing on an arena stage and looking out and going wow I, i'm doing this you know um the festivals are a whole other experience download and all those things are mind-boggling um there is something interesting about like doing say glastonbury we did once and a few of those kind of things that are like you know a lot of people there to see Katy Perry or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and sitting there kind of like, crowd, yeah. kind of like sitting there looking like, when are these guys done? But then you'll see your pockets of people, you know? So um, I probably would say, uh, I, I hate to say it, but I not, don't even hate to say it, but I, I think I land on like sweaty club rock is sort of where I kind of, my heart is, you know, it's like the, yeah. there's something about the theaters. That's great. Cause the, the backstage arrangements are real nice. Cause you know, often the, the shitty club is, is a shitty club yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the backstage arrangements are usually very much like that too. So it's like, yeah. but, um, I think it's sort of, you know, I thrive there in a way that, that you feel, uh, the celebration of it all, the uh, ceremony of it all with all the people it kind of feels like one big sweaty thing you know what i mean yeah okay um just going back to the band again i mean it's, it's the three of you it's, it's you todd it's steph burns and will hunt um between you you've actually covered probably several albums of yeah. my top top 20 albums shall we say uh, uh for yourself like the slash albums uh the first two not the ones with um everybody else singing on it but the first two after that right 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah um they they hold quite a bit of time in my heart also oh, that's uh, great yeah steph as well is it's like the two alice cooper albums he's did last temptation it's probably my favorite alice cooper album such a great ever. record yeah and yeah. Um, um for will the device album something completely different yeah and um you know just i, I just couldn't get enough of that when I, uh when it first came out and it was just brilliant so, so great. I mean, for you, as a final as a final question, then to wrap this up, what what are your say top three albums that you've created over your 
Well, oh, that's that's really interesting. Top three would be hard. I mean, I have to kind of land on my own music because you know, because that's what I do. Mm. Um, you know, with stuff like um, Go Time in two thousand four was a big move for me, making a solo record and that kind of stuff. And and my intention of doing it was like after being through this sort of hamster wheel of record company stuff was just so grueling and like. You know, you would just be writing songs and running around and and nothing was really based on anything to do with art or music. It was all based on, you know, the the business side of it, which is yeah. hard to complain about, but it's true. Um, I will say World on Fire, the Slash yeah. record was really important to me. Um, there was something about that, you know, I remember finishing the song World on Fire. Because the weird thing about my my personal involvement with smkc is is it's sort of like i'm there from the very beginning the rehearsals are usually it starts with slash myself and brent fitz and just as the core unit sort of you know working through the arrangements working stuff up and then um then we bring in miles and you know and then the whole yeah. process starts to become into a recording so i'm there at the very beginning you know before it's even in a studio and then at the very end i'm the last person there singing harmonies on <laughs> on these songs you know yeah and it was so weird to be sitting in orlando florida and i remember just singing because the songs are the songs and you and hmm. when you're that subjective to it you're so wrapped up in it working on it you just you're thinking about it and i remember singing the um the harmonies on world on fire which actually gave me that kind of like world on fire my, my you know my yeah. echo line that i do on on miles and um and you know and even that has its process of you know it's fun it's rewarding but i remember coming out sitting down and him just pressing play on it it wasn't on stun <laughs> but it was loud you know <laughs> and i was like this is i just remember thinking this was insane i remember thinking this yeah. is one of the greatest things i've ever heard yeah um <clears throat> and uh th so that record the other side of that record is the fact that we writ we wrote so many songs and my thoughts were like okay well then some of these are going to be on some japanese release you know mm -hmm. or and then slash is like i think we're just going to release them all which is the cool thing about slash is just slash it does never make some sort of grandiose statement it's just kind of like yeah i think we're you know 17 songs on that album it's mind-boggling yeah um then the third one, oh my God, I don't even know. I mean, it'd be, probably have to be some sort of compilation record <laughs> <laughs> of different things, you know? Let's throw Heroes and Monsters on there just to, because we're promoting it. And I think that that's a very strong record. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've been very fortunate to be a part of so much great music and so much, um, uh, you know, the, the Took stuff I do with, with Brent and the guys um, has been so much fun uh, and... I just did a new record with Tracy Guns. We just yeah. in a lot of it came out of the same uh you know inactivity, I for lack of better words that you know when it sort of came about it was being talked about and it it's really strong. I'm really excited for people to hear that. And it's you know it's just you know who knows. I could be we don't know what's going to be happening next year or the year after that. If you would have told me in 2019 that we're going to take two years off from the world, I'd be like that's never going to happen. Yeah. So I'm just kind of like, I'm at a point now in my life where I'm like, just, you know, I just want to make music and I want to keep doing this for as long as I can. And when I can't do it anymore, well, we'll figure it out then. Then I'll okay. sell cars. <laughs> Top, it's been a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you very much for your time. And I wish you all the best with the new album. Thank you so much. Please take care. Hope to see you guys over there one of these days. Okay, you will. Thank you. Yeah. Take care, brother.